popsicle sticks race down the curb into the sewer. The next American hangman sketch the crayon. Welcome back to the Marathon Mortgage Happy Hour. I'm Mike Lissack. I am Rory Farrell. And today we have somebody on the, the Zoom here. Yeah. So let's cut to that. <laughs> Say hello, Tyler. All right. How's it going, guys? My name's Tyler White, and I'm out here in uh, sunny San Diego. Yeah, so we're all we're all jealous. It actually is the coldest day that it's been all summer out here. It just dropped into like the 50s overnight. So yeah, all of sure. a sudden we're all throwing on hoodies and everything out this way, but... You guys are having your oh man! I had to take off. Summer. I had to take off the tank top and put on a real <laughs> shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. And what team are you with out in, uh, out in San Diego? I am on Berkshire Hathaway um, Home Services. So I actually joined my wife's team and uh, part of Morton King Real Estate Group, which is under Berkshire Hathaway out here in San Diego. So uh, it's been great. Berkshire is a, a super rad company to work with, and uh, a ton of resources for for realtors especially with all the new changes coming about it's uh, it's been really beneficial being a part of the berkshire family killer and i know um, at least around this way it's a very prestigious name like they do high-end real estate and it comes with a, a certain level of like prestige i guess you could say um just with the name alone i'm sure it's similar out there absolutely um one of the reasons obviously joining my wife's team it was like Okay, of course I'll join Berkshire. I'm not going to join an opposing brokerage, <laughs> go head to head. But one of the reasons she she eventually jumped on or originally jumped on with Berkshire was market share. You know, kind of like what you speak to the prestigious name and you know Warren Buffett and everything that comes with that. Um, but especially here in La Jolla where we live, Berkshire has a a huge market share in that kind of luxury market. Yeah. So. Definitely. Um, so we're getting into it a little bit. Let's start with fear though, because that's kind of how we do it. Um, so quick background on me and Tyler, I've known Tyler, I mean, it's been like over 15 years now because he used to come into the restaurant. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He would get off his shift at the restaurant. He would come to my restaurant, have a couple drinks with his buddies. <clears throat> so, I mean, that was even before we started working together, <clears throat> excuse me. And then eventually down the line, I started working for the same brewery he worked for. And then, you know, he's super into the beer community out there. So I I was like, man, you get to choose the beer. Um, So he chose Athletic. Um, And there's a backstory behind Athletic. This is a non-alcoholic. I grabbed the Hazy IPA. What did you grab out there? I grabbed the Upside Dawn, which is the Golden. Okay, the Golden. It's a little bit early. A little bit earlier. (laughs) So I figured a Golden would go nice for breakfast. That's perfect. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. At least it's a non-alcoholic. I forgot. It's like, what, what is it out there? 10 a.m.? 10 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, nice. So, uh, but there is a backstory. Yeah, it's 10 a.m. To... That's all right, though. Yeah, it's all right. I feel like we're on CNN right now or, or Fox, like talking to Talk somebody on, on, a, on a different time zone right now. It's <laughs> different we should have, zone. like, the clock behind us, like the West Coast. Like, yeah, Pacific yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I did want to specifically talk about Athletic, and, you know, we chose that for a reason. So why don't you speak to a little bit about why we went with Athletic today? For sure. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of the funny things. I'll, I'll show my, my pint glass here just to give a little love to to all, Rory and my alma mater with St. Archer. 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 Um, but, you know, yeah, no, don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, one of the reasons I, first of all, said, said athletic is I've been on the non-alcoholic beer train um, for the last couple of years now. Uh, which is probably a direct effect of working in the beer industry for as long as I did, <laughs> um, as it takes a toll on you because the, you know, these 10 a.m. actually go down pretty easy, which was part of the reason I now do the non-alcoholic beers. Good call. Um, but it's cool. So I am part of a, um, a local nonprofit. I serve on the board of directors called Urban Surf for Kids out here. And we do um surf therapy camps during the summer we do life uh life skills achievements programs throughout the year we do one-on-one mentorship and it's all for our local san diego and orange county foster youth and uh youth that are at risk and in the community either without parents or have been involved in the system in some way group homes uh anything of the sort and Athletic has been a huge sponsor for us uh, at Urban. You know, they've on Christmas time they've donated, you know, a huge amount of bikes to the so they each get their own bike, uh, which has been amazing. We've kind of 
collaborated and done uh, trash cleanups on the beaches. So, you know, in the non-alcoholic beer game, it, it kind of gives me the vibe of St. Archer. You know, they came in really hot and they've been taken over. They actually just took over the Ballast Point Brewery here in San Diego, which is their huge. production facility, which is huge. I just looked up a number and they did in two, 2023, they did 258,000 cases. And um, they I think they just opened up another East Coast brewery in Connecticut as well. So um, bi-coastal and for a non-alcoholic beer, it's pretty rad to, to see them taking off like that. Yeah, and sure. to do such good work throughout the community so that's awesome that's a really that's, cool group you're part of there man that's huge oh man it's been so much fun i, I literally got involved because my friend asked me if i wanted to volunteer for a surf camp and i said yes and then he told me on the next conversation that i was now part of the board of directors <laughs> and that i would be officially sworn in <laughs> at the next meeting damn yeah. the ranks quickly i I had no idea I would do something like that. I'd never been on a board and order anything. I had no idea how I was even going to he help or be a part of it. And, you know, I'm four years in now and I actually just finished my fourth uh, wet hop beer collaboration, which we do, which is another fundraiser, uh, which I get to tie in my, my beer background. Um, we have a donor that donates his entire crop of local hops and so we team up with the local brewery out here, which I get to like jump into my beer, beer shoes again and team up with a bunch of old colleagues and, and friends. And we'd get a brew of beer uh, using all the donated hops and a portion of that goes back to our program. So it's been awesome to be able to tie in my beer background and all the different ways, uh, you know, in my my new life, I guess you could say. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And is there like a place people can donate or like a website you guys have or something we can put in? The absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. US, us4k.org, um, urban surf for kids. If you check it out online, you'll see a bunch of, uh, stuff online with, uh, all our different pictures from the different surf camps. And we've just, did, it's, it's such a cool program because you're taking these inner city kids or, or kids who, don't have parents or have been just kind of pushed around the system and getting to see the ocean for the first time or getting to go in the ocean for the first time. It's incredible to see like the look on their face. It, it really is life changing and I wouldn't change it for a thing. It's been, you know, one of the most random things that I've come across being, I never thought I'd be on a board or do anything like that. Yeah, and yeah. now it's, I feel I find myself, putting so much time into it that it's like okay i gotta remember like i also have a career side of it because yeah, it's just yeah. so in, invigorating and so much fun to to be able to put your time into it and see Absolutely. the direct outcome of it yeah we should definitely maybe we talk to tom maybe we do like a, a donation yeah, we'll where we, we go out there and uh surf with the kids we'll figure something out yeah yeah, yeah. Um, dude that would be so rad yeah just come awesome. on do a little camp yeah well let's get licensed in california <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I mean that you're able to bring that in from your from your lifetime experience of surfing too. Like you grew up surfing, you you grew up in San Diego, if I remember right. So I mean, you have that passion for surfing, but then yep. you also get to use it for good and you know build your community um, and you know do better for your community. Absolutely, no, oh, awesome. And that uh, it's it's huge. I mean, surfing surfing's my life. So to be able to use that and like everything that surfing's given me and you know, spiritually and everything, just to be able to pass that on to these kids and, and see the effect of it. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it must be cool to say, I mean, I'm sure you've had some kids that you met the first year that you've either seen reoccurring or you've, you've heard stories about how, you know, how they're doing now. And it must be really cool to, to see that progress and see how it's helped them. Oh, it's so cool. Some of them are, are they, they basically graduate our program. We have basically anything from like, I want to say like four or five to 18 is like our age range. And we have some of these kids that graduate out at 18 and then they come back and volunteer with the program or they take on part-time jobs within our program. And so we're able to actually hire them on. And I mean, they're, they're learning life skills where they're learning how to balance a checkbook or they're learning how to pay rent or save and uh, you know, take a paycheck and how to like save for rent and save for meals and food and, stuff you don't learn in school, unfortunately, but yeah, you know, life skills that are just so important that yeah. they're just not given because they don't have parents. 
Yeah, that's and then it, it also makes us feel so responsible or so uh, appreciative of you know responsible to be a great parent. Like you know, you have a young son, and then also appreciative of the you know the upbringing that we had and the simple things that we were given, and it just really puts things in perspective for you. Totally, just having someone care for you and like put you first, and that's this whole opportunity is giving them a chance where it's one on one, and they're the they're in the spotlight for an hour or three hours they've just never had it before it's it's super cool it's awesome very cool uh well that i mean we'll definitely we'll do a link in the description and we'll you know we'll link you all that we'll figure out donations and things but um i want to get into you know i i grew up or uh, i should say i grew up in this industry working with my father in the same company um tom's uh wife has worked in their past tom's our boss his mom works here you know tom like you know he's basically family yeah at this point yeah. so how is it working with family how did you know <laughs> It's got to, there's got to be some pros and cons. Uh, my wife and I talk about that all the time. She's like, I couldn't do your job. You couldn't do my job. And we just, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be working in the same place very well. So how does that work with, you know, balance yeah. family life and work life? And you have, a young, like I said, a young son. And Yeah. I mean, it's, it was a, it's a funny balance. Cause let's just say my wife and I have two completely opposite, uh, you know, ways of working. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, she's very she came from like uh high level like C level corporate jobs and was very high up in the marketing roles and and had done that side of it and so for her transition into real estate was you know taking on her own business and being able to grow it from from that segment where for me I'm like I love the opportunity to get to talk with people network and then also have the freedom to be a dad, surf, and do all the things that I like to do for myself. Yeah. Um, but working together was <laughs> the first couple of months was a big learning curve, partly for me because I do things on opposite schedules. She's like, get up in the morning, get the work that she needs to get done. And I like to do, you know, I like to surf in the morning or do this. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, 7 p.m. We're sitting on the couch and I'm like, so this is my time where I want to ask you all the business questions that I think about all day. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got a I'm glass of wine and like ready to completely turn off. So I think learning, learning the balance of how to live together and not let the work side completely take over was my biggest like learning curve. Um, but it's been amazing. I mean, I basically have a, a real estate guru that I get, I live with. And, you know, as you guys know, every single transaction is completely different. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's two houses that are alike, you know, everyone's background's different, how it's funded, all the different ins and outs of it. So having someone that's been through a lot and can kind of guide me through, or at least kind of give me pointers and we can kind of talk about it together and, and see where, which direction you need to go with it. Uh, it's been super helpful. I feel like I started, you know, a year in versus like a brand new agent. Nice. which has been, been and, it's been good. Same thing. We had a, a father son team on a couple of weeks ago um, and similar vibe where it's like, you have this wealth of knowledge, but then you also feel comfortable going to them. Cause you might have a boss who is super, you know, mm -hmm. knowledgeable, but maybe you don't feel comfortable within your first couple of weeks or months of your, your career to, to ask them about what you've seen to think is a silly question or a dumb question where you, yeah. you can go to your wife or you can go to your father. Mm -hmm not feel like it's a dumb question know you're going to get the right answer and you know an honest answer yeah yeah so and it must absolutely be. it's just it's it's someone to see that they're doing like all their success you can see what is making them successful and then use that and kind of craft it into your own personal direction yeah um, and I know one of the benefits of working in our industry is a little bit of that flexibility. I mean, this kid was just in Greece for the past eight days. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but I know with a young family, like being, Love it. being the parent who can kind of shift the schedule around a little bit, have a little bit more flexibility with making your own schedule is huge. And now you guys have two parents who can do that. And man, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. maybe your wife's I'll take the first half of the day. You take the second half of the day. We'll shift around parenting um, responsibilities based on how you like to work. Like that's, that's a huge benefit as long as you can stay on, on track. <laughs> it's yeah, it, it's been huge, especially when they're swell. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's been a, it's been a very quiet summer, so it hasn't been too much of an issue. Yeah. Uh, but let's just say there's times of the year that it gets a little hectic. It's like, 
haven't seen you in 12 hours what's happening <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah winter's coming but you know clients clients do come first so you know I, I do let them know that but i i very much live my life by the tides the winds and then obviously everything else <laughs> yeah you just surf down the coast to where they're at to go show them a home and then come back exactly yeah. oh you want to see a house on the coast perfect yeah perfect i'll meet you there what a wind's high time yeah i'll be there in three oh, hours yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome um so our background is in sales so even when back to when we were working in the restaurants uh you know the restaurants and bars like a lot of that sales salesmanship um you know customer service connecting with with people with clients um and then we moved on to beer sales um and then it's funny with someone that we worked with at saint archer he's uh after saint archer went to mortgage uh mortgage is just like me and we kind of we chatted about that a lot uh, shout out to ziggy um so i I always feel like those you? backgrounds are are so important in any type of sales, any type of customer service, um, you know, quote unquote corporate um, job or career. Like, how do you feel like that's helped with your your like how do you how do you use that in your real estate career? Absolutely, I think to be honest, one of the things when I was kind of going through a transition after I did beer, I went into digital advertising and was in front of a computer. It was really, really awesome. I worked with a, a good buddy and we started a company and it was super successful, but I, I found myself craving that human interaction again, yeah. um, which I, I feel like that serving industry, beer sales, that's that's where we thrived. And I think that's what, what I know why you did so well. And that I definitely attribute my success in that industry because of you know being able to interact with people and and you make these lifelong friendships. And so when I went into real estate, I was like, this is perfect. I mean, this is basically the same thing from my beer days. I just relationship building. And my whole idea was like, I want to do continue living my life the way I live it and use that as how I gain leads. So going to the gym, going surfing, taking my son to school and meeting the parents there and just walking the neighborhood I wanted to just be myself and knew that that would be a great way to kind of bring in business. And I think like working in the beer industry, being able to walk into a random bar, you know, and, you know, sit down and talk with someone and, you know, show them reasons why that beer would be better and, and financially why it would make sense or all these different things. I, I feel like have been a huge or huge help in like transitioning to real estate. And, um, I think with with real estate, obviously, it's such a different kind of purchase, but there's a lot of emotion that falls on a beer purchase as well, which most people <laughs> outside of beer industry don't realize that. But in real estate, it's the same thing. It's like it's such an emotional like process, like from everything, like finding the house to you know you're making the biggest purchase of your life, and and I feel like working with the team that we had at St. Archer and. And I, I feel like it it got me ready for real estate in a, in a big way. So, and then just being able to take my entire contact and network and sphere that I grew from that and then kind of just transition it over and use that same mentality. And, you know, like, okay, I know all these people now. I'm just going to start, you know, add them to my newsletter and I want them to kind of see that I'm involved in what I'm doing and, and reach out to them and kind of see how, I can nurture that same sphere from the beer days into real estate. So it's and been so a cool transition. I'm sure you'll, you'll agree, but so much of quote unquote, our sales, um, it doesn't matter what you're selling. It's like, you're selling yourself at the end of the day. It's like, does that person trust you? Does that person, you know, can they get along with you? Are they, you know, are you going to come through for them on a deadline? Things like that. So, I mean, it's so much of, if you can sell yourself, then, you know, whatever that product is on the back end of that is, is going to, you know, that'll, that those chips will fall, but for sure. And I think also too, like you're saying about your newsletter and, and what you're doing to stay in front of your sphere of influence, like with social media and, and all the things of these people you've already touched on. I was just reading a book I'm reading now. They were talking about how some crazy number of sales don't even happen. I think it was like 80 or 90% of sales don't happen until after the eighth touch on somebody. Oops, I lost you guys for a second. Nope. You there? Uh, looks like we got you mike i'm sorry I, I, yeah i lost you there for the last like couple seconds just right when you started about that book if you can just 
Oh yeah, no, that, that. like probably eighty to ninety percent of sales don't happen until after the eighth touch. So it's like when you already have a buildup of your sphere of influence of people that know you and you've touched on for years and like like they trust you and now they're you're showing them, hey, this is what I do now. I'm doing real estate. It just makes them that more. Uh, that much more comfortable with you and, and working with you. It's, it's a huge thing. And it's like taking that from beer to now real estate. It's almost like not an easy flip to do, you know, it's still hard and real estate is very hard field to become successful in. It's just, it makes it that much easier or smoother than it was. Uh, totally. It's like you didn't have that background. Yeah, totally. And that's something I found too, is just being myself. I, when I first started, you know, coming from beer, I was like, all right, you know, in beer, in the beer industry, it's like, you want to be the cool guy, you be friends with everyone. I transitioned to real estate. I'm like, okay, I got to button it up. I got to be professional and, and this and that. And then I realized I'm like, people are going to see through that. They want to be, they want to work with someone that they trust, but also someone they get along with. Like, I know I'm not just another suit, <laughs> you know? So it's like, why am I going to pretend to do that? Like, I'm going to wear a Hawaiian shirt and like, I'm going to talk to you about surf and beer and we're going to hang out and be friends and you're going to trust me because I want to do what's best for you. Cause you, you know, that is, you know, at the core of me. Absolutely. So, and that's how they remember you and they come back to you and they send people your way. It's like that, that it's what makes you, you, you know? And I think I was the same way. I, I came right from college into this. I didn't have any background in sales or anything. So the past three years and four years of doing this has been a huge learning process of, all right, like what works, what makes people more comfortable with me? I'm young. So it's like when I'm working with people that are, you know, in their forties, fifties, just being myself, that's what always ends up working. You know, like even if I wear a suit to settlement or whatever, people know that like <laughs> this guy doesn't wear suits, you know, it's just not who I am. So, um, but it, it makes it that much better or that much smoother to connect with people and, and be yourself um, than it does to, to act like you are somebody different. hundred percent. Yeah. So and I'll, I'll shout out to uh, Jeff and Anthony from St. Archer because, you know, beer yes. stuff can go, uh, how you're trained can be, you know, different. So, I mean, you might find a brewery that's just like, hey, this is beer sales. It's fun. It's, you know, it's not a real job. You know, how many times have people said, oh, you sell beer? That's got to be the most fun. And it's like, it is. But also it's like, they taught us to treat it like a job. You know, they, they yeah. came, specifically Jeff came from Boston Beer, which has this uh, pedigree of, you know, down like dialed in sales like they're the best training mm -hmm. in the world and they treat it like you're selling pharmaceuticals or medical devices or anything else that's like quote unquote a real job so we approach the beer sales as a quote unquote a real job like we you know we look nice rolling into these or into these accounts and uh we followed up and we had you know organization it wasn't just like no oh, here's here's beer you want it like it was very organized and i think that coming from that training to quote unquote totally. professional, you know, selling something bigger like real estate goes a long way. Whereas if you were just working for some rinky dink brewery that didn't value that it wouldn't translate as well. Yeah. That's, that's the, such a great way of putting it. Cause it's so true. Like you don't even, or I didn't even realize, you know, until afterwards you realize like how much instilled in us, you know, like, Hey, put your best foot forward. Like, why don't you throw some pants on? Don't wear shorts. Like, you know, keep a button up shirt, like just to like show people that you mean that you're serious. Like you could still be yourself, but that you're not just out there drinking beer. You know, I'm sure we came across the reps that were just, Oh yeah, this guy sits in this bar all day and drinks beer and he's hoping to get the one keg sold. And yeah. then it's like, Oh yeah, I just sold 10 kegs in that are permanent. <laughs> you know, yeah. And they're going to be putting four, four per week. So I, I do feel like, working under those guys and basically all the, all the different higher ups that we got to touch with, especially as St. Archer got purchased by Miller Coors and kind of learning that corporate kind of side of things. It was so many different pieces to the puzzle that I feel like we can both use in our careers now. That is amazing. Like I would have never thought that, you know, you, you leave the beer industry. You're like, eh, was that, was that worth it? Like, did, is that going to go into my next life? And it does more than I would have ever thought. For sure. Hey, hold that, hold that thought for a second. We got to reset our camera. It like times out after 30 minutes. Oh, all good. All good. Yeah. You want to touch on like one more thing? Yeah. Yeah.
Tyler, Zoom's going to kick us out in another like 10 minutes or so. So I, I have something I yeah, want yeah. to talk with you, but is there anything that you specifically want to touch on? Because I, I mean, this is part, this is your podcast too. I mean, no, I, I love just talking with you guys. This is great. I think it, I think we've kind of transitioned to a bunch of cool stuff. I mean, we can, we can touch on like the San Diego market if you want to. I mean, it's exactly what it's, I'm, I'm like, who the hell are buying houses? <laughs> dude, it's funny you said that. Cause I, I like you sent that little kind of blurb. You're like, who's buying these houses? The, the you know, the average or the median sales price in San Diego is like a million 55, you know, that's up 4% year over year. And the people that are buying the houses right now, there's a lot of gift funds. I, I don't know if you guys find the same thing out there, um, but especially not. out here where, you know, for ex just like a, a little bit of a side, when my wife started in 2018, sorry, 2018 in La Jolla, the median sales price was 1.7 million. Oh, wow. It's 4.1 million today. In That's La Jolla. In La Jolla from like 18 to now. So it's wild the like the growth and and so it, it leads me into the gifting thing but so where we what happened is we saw bay area like northern california because they didn't want to be in the city anymore they wanted to come down they could find space and san diego was a huge discount from up there because prices were already higher up there so they came down they had the funds from the corporate jobs that they had up there or the different jobs. So it brought down a ton of money into the market. So that's, that was one of the biggest things that changed. And then as far as like newer, you know, newer home buyers, like the younger mm -hmm. couples, families have been able to, because of this, you know, growth in the worth of homes, parents are able to take out gift funds out of their equity. You know, they bought their house for a hundred thousand dollars in the eighties or nineties and you know, now it's worth, you know, a couple million, they're able to pull out money, even though they maybe have already refinanced and pulled out money to do some work on the house, they're still able to pull a good chunk and gift that to their, their kids who are going to go on to buy the next house. So we're seeing a blend of people coming from out of, out of area. And then also some of the younger couples being able to, to take those gift funds and use them. Wow. Um, yeah. Cause so I that's, think like you know, it's, I was just sorry, not to cut you off, but I was just thinking, like, you know, oh. if my girlfriend and I were out in La Jolla, there's no way we're buying a home anytime soon. Like ever. No, <laughs> no. Like I'm renting until the day I die out there. That's just I get that. And I do my my wife and I, we live in a beautiful area here in Bird Rock, uh, which is in La Jolla. I can walk to the beach. It's amazing. We've been in our place since 2020. We actually mm -hmm. rent as well. Um, but our landlords, he's awesome. Like he bought the house in the 90s. He's stoked on us. He gives us a great deal, but he also knows because we treat it as our home. And so, you know, I'm not going to lie. My eventual goal, goal is he's just like, you know, I love you guys so much. I'm going to sell or finance this for you and you guys can get it for a great deal. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. He's trying to manifest that. So I get <laughs> Put it out there. say that, you know, it, it's, it's crazy because there is such a mix of like home prices. You know, I see my family home that I grew up in going well over a million where I was like, I never thought East County, San Diego would crest that, you know, price range. And, you know, it, it's just like, I just, in my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to, we're just going to make it work. I want to live here and I, I know I want to be here. So I'm going to find a way to make it work. And, you know, there are a lot of people who are still buying houses around here. So people are finding a way and, you know, obviously with rates kind of doing what they've done, we're seeing a little bit of reprieve there. So I'm hoping that kind of helps as well. Nice. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's, it's because it's funny. Yeah. I was looking up, uh, you know, the stats on San Diego County specifically and in our area and, you know, our area median income is about the same as it is in San Diego. Um, but the home prices average home prices is like half as much. And we still see a lot of people struggling. To yeah, live. for sure. To come up with you know three percent or five percent down plus the closing costs and now with the new NAR like yeah. it's buyer uh, you know buyer um, side commissions things like that so it's like it's it's I couldn't even imagine being a first time home buyer who doesn't I mean if you don't have access to those gift funds it's like it sounds like it's a it's a tough thing but and then I imagine just like any it's other a little bit tough like, in no go ahead sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was saying 
you know, I used to live in San Francisco and you would just see like, you know, San Francisco got crazy and then Oakland and then East Bay. It's like, it just, it's going further and further. So like, you, you know, to your point with your parents place, like out, in, you know, East of, East of, you know, the city and East of the beach, it's like the further out it, it gets, you're still spending a million. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's kind of like one of those things that it is what it is. It's, it's a great area and that's why people want to live here. Yep. And, <laughs> You know what the economy is going to do that obviously has such a huge effect but it's it, it i kind of look at it as it, it is what it is and people are finding a way to make it work and um yeah yeah i don't know it's it's a it's a funny market though it's in in san diego i don't know if it's the same out with you guys but it's it's so good too so like la jolla i was telling you guys that huge jump in median sales price but that gets lumped into San Diego County as well. So you have this huge high-end market, sure. but then San Diego County also, you'll have out by my parents' house in East County, which will, a lot of those will bring the the price down a little bit. And so you're seeing these different pockets and, you know, it'll go high in La Jolla and then you have another area that's a little bit more affordable, but, you know, San Diego schools are one of the big reasons people want to move here too. You know, it's like the school area. So, um, different schools have a better rating and so those pockets start to fill up and then they kind of spread out and around there and you know that's what i think that's when one of the biggest reasons people have continued to move to san diego is yeah. school space and price uh, even though price continues to go up but i think it's everywhere yeah <laughs> uh well we got like three or four more, more minutes uh, i think it's a good time to just kind of sign off and what we do at the end is typically we do a win so we kind of put you on the spot so you want to go first? I can go second, and then then yeah. we'll round this out. I just think my win would be uh, being in Greece for the past week and then getting <laughs> extremely busy while I was in Greece. So I locked in like three deals, and I have a potential like three more to. Get I love that. Done. So yeah, no complaints. Get the best of both worlds. And yeah, get the vacation and get the business. Huge, so. huge shout out to Tom and Rory for uh, taking care of me while I was out there. So yeah, yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah, same thing. Had a couple good good months in a row and I just keep waiting for the other foot to drop because I'm just used to it not being you know, as good. It's yeah. been slow. So I uh, just had it, you know, started out this month strong and had a nice Labor Day weekend with the family, spent some good family time at the beach. Killer. So that's my win. I love that. Yeah. You know, I, one of those things I take from that, I feel like when you do something good for yourself and you you take care of yourself, the deals come in. Yeah. It's like when you're all stout and you're, you're, you're running ragged and you're trying to figure out where the next one's going to come. You know, it doesn't. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to do something for myself. And then you're on vacation. And you're like, boom, boom, boom. That's a good, <laughs> so that's a good way to look at it. Cause I always just look at it like, ah, shit, I'm going to go on vacation. Here I go. It's going to get busy now. But I never looked at it like, Hey, maybe it's the universe saying, why don't you do something for yourself and we'll take care of you while we're out there. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. I like, I'm a like firm, firm saying. believer in that. <laughs> firm believer in that. You know, I think for me, you know, being this is my first year in real estate, um, one of my biggest wins recently turning 38, turned it on Friday. Um, so you got to celebrate with the family, but birthday. just this whole year of like coming into real estate, I was able to start really strong. I already have 1.7 million in sales under my belt. Uh, my wife and I's team, uh, we're going on this second quarter in a row in the top 100 for Berkshire out here. Wow. Um, so I think just in general, like I'm excited. It's, it's been a good, good couple months and excited just to kind of see where 38 goes and awesome man here take the year as it goes yeah love it congratulations yeah congrats and Cheers. Uh, yeah man i appreciate you this is the first zoom and i think it went well so i appreciate you taking the time i know you're smart first podcast so i hope uh, <laughs> i hope the nerves calm down a little bit um but yeah thanks for coming on it was cool to hear a different perspective and just all the other stuff that you're involved in and the community stuff that you're involved in so yeah maybe next time we oh, do I appreciate come it. out to you and, uh, <laughs> and do it in san diego you guys are always welcome. I mean, we have a few breweries out here we can hit. And uh, yeah, always down to do that. I appreciate you guys having me on. Hopefully I didn't talk too much, but no, that was I love it. All right. Killer. Cheers, Tyler. Thank Cheers, you, man. Shout Cheers, out to guys. Bye. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers Bye. 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 Bye.